We're now going to proceed to begin the funeral service for our dear brother, Sunrise, September 5th, 1960. Sunset, March 14th, 2022. Frederick Lynn Roney, gone too soon. We're going to follow the program that the family laid out. And we're going to begin with prayer. We're going to ask everyone if they wouldn't mind standing as Brother Herndon comes up and offers a prayer, followed by Brother Frank with a scripture reading. Following that will be a musical selection. Truly, dear God, we're so thankful to be in your presence this morning. We thank you for the family, dear God. We thank you for Freddie's valiant fight, Lord God, and at the end, accepting God in his heart. What a merciful God you are, Heavenly Father. We just pray that you strengthen the family, bless them in their hearts, bless them in their minds, dear God. You know the loss. You understand all things, dear God. We just pray you comfort them, bless them, body, mind, and soul. In Jesus' name, amen. Scripture reading will be found in uh, Matthew's, I mean, Psalms 27, verses 1 through 5. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? My Lord. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, my they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war shall rise against me, and this will I be confident. My, my. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the times of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle Lord. shall he hide me, he shall set me upon a rock. We pray that God will add a blessing to the reading of his word and our prayers are definitely with the family. Amen. This time we have a musical selection, musical selection. God bless and comfort you. Amen. <clears throat> Discouraged. 
Freddie was a glue person. He brought people together. Freddie connected a whole bunch of people. He made whatever room he went in a little bit brighter, a little bit better. A huge loss for the family, for the church family, for the community. But we know that God's grace is sufficient to guide us through such a heavy loss. Some losses, you don't really sense the depth of it until some time later. Freddie is one of those people. This time we're going to read obituary, acknowledgments, telegrams, and resolutions. Sister Sherry Roney. His sister. Or, or prophetically. Or prophetically. Thank you. Obituary. Frederick Lynn Roney, Freddie as we called him, was a man of knowledge and wisdom. He was born September 5, 1960 in Detroit, Michigan. Freddie was the sixth child born to the union of the late Eunice and Myrtle Roney. Freddie attended Detroit public schools until he relocated to Jackson, Michigan in 1975. He then attended Jackson Public School and graduated from Jackson High in 1979. Upon graduation, Freddie worked at A&W Rootbeard and soon after maintained employment working maintenance and Holiday Inn, at Holiday Inn and other hotels and housing units for many years. Freddie loved music, family gatherings, and bike riding. He loved God and his family above all else and would do anything for them. Anytime a friend, family member needed maintenance repair around their home, he would be there. He would be there to fix it. Freddie believed the key to success was putting God first, then family and working hard. Freddie became ill roughly three years ago. He was a private man and suffered in silence because he didn't want people to worry about him. He had a strong faith in God and accepted him as his personal Lord and Savior. One of his favorite sayings was, pray about it and leave it in the hands of, in God's hands. Freddie was, one, Freddie was one who amplified great integrity 
and love towards others, and he leaves behind a commendable legacy. He was preceded in death by his parents, Eunice and Myrtle Roney, four siblings, Shannon Partlow, Carla Roney, Dwayne Burden, and Patricia Roney. Freddie loved to cherish Freddie Wands, wait, loved ones left to cherish his memories are his three loving children, Natasha, India, and, and their mother, Lori, and his son, Dominique, 11 grandchildren, Ricky, Rakina, Devon, Michael, Tiana, Keandre, DeAndre, Darion, Amir, and Michaela, and Ella Rose. And his four loving sisters, Glenetta, Kim, Carmen, and Sherry. He also leaves a host of nieces, nephews, and other family and friends that include two special friends, Barbara and Tracy. At the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 7. Thank you all for that. This time we have another musical selection. You want to join us?
touched so many lives. We said earlier, so many lives. We're going to make space in the program here for special remarks from, or should I say remarks, from family and friends. So if there's anyone out here that wants to say a word to the family or just share a reflection of what Freddie meant to you or a memory that you have, a microphone is on our right, right over there. And we would like to invite you up at this time to share a remark or reflection on the life of Freddie Roney. Good afternoon. I'm Tracy, pretty much you most of you guys know me. Um, I just want to say to the family that Freddie and I had a special bond together, a very special bond. He gave me a rough time sometime, but most of all, it was all out of love, and I know it was. Um, but I want to say to the family, not only I love Freddie, I love you guys too. And that's why I did what I did for Freddie, not only because I was in love with Freddie, because I loved each and every one of you guys, because I know y'all hardworking family, y'all a loving family, and I just wanted to step in and be a part of the family as well. Me and Freddie spent a lot of time together at U of M, and I spent a lot of time at the house with him, and I got, got to see what he was going through with. But I just want to leave with you all and let you guys know Freddie loved his family, and he loved his friends. And I know for once that he loved me. And I wish things could have got better. And I think to this day, that would have been my husband because we was engaged. But I just want to let you all know that I love you. And anything I can do, to let me know. And I'm here. Two things. One, family. That was Freddie's. He preached that. He would be happy today seeing all his family here. Church family and his family. Two, the other thing with Freddie was basketball. That boy. <laughs> He used to have me out there playing basketball. When we grew up in Detroit, we were about 15, 16 years old, beating grown men. Winter time, it didn't matter. We'd take the shovel, clean off the basketball court, and go out there and play. We had a basketball court in front of the house. We had one couple of streets over. We knew where all the basketball courts was. Then we moved to Jackson. It didn't change. King Center, Boo Center, after school, basketball all the time. The boy was bad. I'm not saying it because he's my cousin. I'm telling you because it's true. We didn't have any aspirations of playing in the NBA, but I'm telling you, 
We played that basketball so hard. Nobody can stop Freddie. I don't care. You can say what you want to say. That boy could dribble. And he was good. Freddie was good. Um, he's going to be sadly missed. He's really going to be missed. And the family thing, like I said, Freddie preached that. Always, family, family, family. He loved his family. He did. Tasha, India, Dominique, your dad truly loves y'all. First of all, I would like to say uh, my heart goes out to the family, and I'm sorry for the loss of Freddie. Uh, me and Freddie go back way, way back from when he first moved back from Detroit down to Jackson. I met him. And uh, my fondest memories of Freddie is when we worked in the restaurant together at A&W. <laughs> Man, we always got the food put out, but it seemed like when we got done, it was a major food fight in there. Everything was a mess, but we got it done. But I just wanted to say I'm going to miss Freddie because he's like a brother to me, and uh, I'm going to really, really miss him. And I, I just lost my wife a few months ago, so this is like really, really rough on me. I know six months ago he was texting me on the phone and asking me things, and he asked me how I felt. And I told him I was feeling strong, but I was feeling strong because I know my wife had lost her life with the suffering. It was over with and it was gone. Now, during Freddie's death, I felt it even a little bit stronger, even though he's my, a real good friend. I mean, a real good friend. Uh, he's making me stronger through this. So I hope the family will dig down and find that strength and come through this and hopefully everybody be somewhat back to normal because these last few years have been hard on all families. Everybody's lost a lot of loved ones. I've lost so many people in the last six months that it's, it's hard to find happy times. But I want y'all to remember Freddie for the happy times and the good times y'all had, especially that dance and stuff he was doing. So y'all y'all hold on to them memories. So uh, I love y'all and, and uh, God bless you. Okay, come on. Okay, well, um, I'm just gonna keep this short and sweet, like my dad. Um, so he, I just think him. I just want to thank him for showing me what true love is. He, he loved us so much. And I told Tasha I wasn't going to cry, but here I am crying. So we go to the U of M, uh, and Tasha and I was up there the whole night seeing him go through what he went through. It was, it was horrible. But to see him be so strong and still care about us, telling us, don't worry, it's going to be okay. He was just always worried about other people instead of himself. He was so strong to go through what he went through and just kept telling us it's going to be okay. And then he was, he was mumbling some words and looking up to the sky, and I'm like, Dad, what are you doing? And he said, I'm talking to God. I'm talking to God. So he's, gonna, he's all right. He, he is all right. And you mourn a little different when you know that they're saved, you know. So he's up there. What well, God, we're just going to miss him. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss him calling at 6 in the morning. 6 in the morning. <laughs> And I have a lot of kids, and he's like, come on, baby girl, let, let's go ride out and listen to some music. 
and go shopping and get these little munchkins something to wear. I just, I just wish that we knew, we knew he was a sick, and you know, it would have been a little different, you know, just, we would have been able to be there and probably get on his nerves a little more with the kids, but he was strong, so I, I appreciate him for being strong, and that's what he would want us to do is keep going, you know, and keep God and, and be strong and have strength and love each other. I just thank him for or for God for allowing us to have a dad like him. Because some people don't have dads like him. He was really amazing. And he loved everybody. All, all the grandkids. He just, uh, he'll be missed. So I just thank him for loving us. And you guys have a good, we'll get through this. Good morning, everybody. I didn't really prepare anything, so I'll just start with this poem. It's called Broken Chain. We little knew that morning that God was going to call you your name. In life, we love you dearly. In death, we do the same. It broke our hearts to lose you, and you did not go alone. For part of us went with you the day God called you home. You left us peaceful memories. Your love is still our guide. And though we cannot see you, you're always at our side. Our family chain is broken and nothing seems the same. But as God, as God calls us one by one, the chain will link again. And that's by an unknown author. So there's so much that I can say about my dad. But the greatest thing that he left us was the love of a father. Um, a lot of people, like my sister said, they don't have the option to have someone. I can't look at you all. <laughs> I got to look somewhere else. But um, the love of a father, uh, he was there to guide us. He was there to give us wisdom. Anytime I had an issue, I can call him. He said, oh, baby girl, you'll be all right. Just pray about it and leave it in God's hands, and we're going to be all right, and you just keep on moving. He was my biggest motivator. He always told me, oh, baby girl, you're going to make it. You're going to be all right. You're going to have that pool house, and I'm going to live back there, and everything is going to be great. And I'm really upset that he wasn't able to make it to see me go wherever it is I'm going to go. But I believe I have a father's blessing on me. And now that he's not here, of course, God is always taking care of me, but my dad will always say, I'm your earthly father, but you always make sure that you talk to your heavenly father. So although I've lost a father, I still have God. I don't know what else to say. Thank you all for coming, and have a nice day. Freddie was a special dude, man. He went through a lot <clears throat> throughout his life and his journey. And um, it was probably about eight years ago. I was in a in a tough spot in life, you know, just I was down and um, trying to figure out which direction I was gonna move in. And uh, we he slid up on me and he was like, nephew, I've been there. And um, he would always say, like, uh, don't worry about what other people say about you. You know, you, you keep your mind on God and keep your mind on what you're striving to do. And um, during that time, it meant a lot to me. So when I uh, started driving trucks, he would call me, hey, nephew, what's going on? You out there handing them 18 wheels? Yeah, I'm, I'm all right. Thanks for calling. Then he would always say, you know, bring it on home, bring it on in. 
he made it a point to always call me at least like two, three times a week. You know, so that, you know, not only did he always talk about family, he stood by it. He never talked about nobody behind their back. He never backstabbed nobody. He was always solid through and through. You don't get that out of nobody. So, you know, that type of legacy is, is, is power and empowering within itself. Most important, you know, I hope everybody take them jewels with them on their journey. You know, it's always room for growth, and um, we gonna miss that guy, man. That was a special dude, and he was the life of the party. But in the end, you know, he always, you know, one of the things that he said that, that stuck with me was either way, you know, God got me. So, you know, y'all keep that, and then, you know, live by the legacy. Don't just talk about it, live by it. Thank you, Uncle Freddie. This one is superbly hard. We lost a brother. You all lost a dad. But having gained an angel. Um, Freddie. We did everything, everything together. We were very close in age. Um, we were the same age for like three days. But he called me big sister. I don't, I don't know how, but. I can't even think of the words to express the love that he displayed to all of us, all the time, all the time. He was so loving, considerate. Oh, I really don't um, know how to express the loss. Um, like they said, Freddie was the life of all events. He made sure that we had a good time. And if we didn't, he was going to have one anyways, because he, you know, he did, he did, Freddie did him. Um, he was a special part of this family, a special part. And he made sure that he displayed and showed the love to each and every one of us. And, and by the way, I was a baby girl too. <laughs> yeah, I just left India house, baby girl, you know. That heart represents how I feel. It's, um, It's designed with love, but it's a hole in the middle. And that's how I feel. He'll never be replaced, but he'll always live in my heart. I love you, Freddie. And we're gonna need prayers after this that we continue to keep his love alive. No. 
I'm Freddie's cousin, Tanya, but he adopted me as, he was like a big brother. He used to say, I'm not your cousin, I'm your brother. We did a lot together, we had a lot of laughs. Freddie was the only one that can put me in a trick bag and I would forgive him. Freddie was the only one that could borrow some money from me, $25 and take three months to pay me back and I know he had it. <laughs> Freddie was the only one that could call me at four o'clock in the morning and say, what you doing, baby girl? <laughs> and I say, what you think, Freddie? I'm just four o'clock in the morning, I'm chilling. <laughs> well, I just want you to know I love you. Now, I can go to bed. <laughs> um, Freddie was very, very smart, very intelligent. Um, he was very gifted with his hands. Um, he could clean a car. I mean, like, shine it up, buff it up, just like you got it from the, the place, the dealership or something like that, you know. He could fix anything, paint anything. You know, I could always call him to do these things. I remember one particular time at my house, it was a big old um, raccoon, and it was standing in front of my door like he lived there, you know, like he was just about to go in. And I was just in shock. I was like froze. I couldn't do nothing. I couldn't get out the car, so I called Freddie. He came over, <laughs> and I had bought, I had called my dad, and he told me to get some lighter fluid, um, transmission fluid, <laughs> and some uh, cheese balls. So we putting it all around the house for the raccoon to eat. And after a while, you know, Freddie was like, what you going to do with the rest of these? I'm like, don't that supposed to be going around the house? He said, no, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm taking ease. So, but I just, I guess God just, I don't know if I'm just in denial or just, I know that it has happened, but I, I can't believe this. It's just like, it's just unbelievable to me. It's like, you know, if I could just say, Freddie, okay, just, just quit dying, and Freddie and just come back home. <laughs> you know, just, just come back home with us. I just wish I could just do that because I'm just going to miss him so bad. I mean, it just don't even seem like life without him. It just seemed like, you know, my son had an open house. Fred was there. It seemed like the next time we ever get together, it just seemed like it's just not even going to be the same. It just seemed like it's just going to be something missing us. That's Fred. But I'm glad God, you know, um, undertook in this situation, you know, and God seemed for him to go home and take his rest. And I'm sure that, you know, his mom and the other family members is, is happy. And I'm sure he's happy, but we're just going to miss him. So as Kim said, just continue to pray for us. I didn't say one thing. This place, this, this church, that was the most important thing to res from rescuing us from Detroit. Had it not been for Brother Hampton, we wouldn't even be here. None of y'all would be here because we would probably be a different situation, be different if we, wouldn't, if we didn't get to Jackson. So I just want to say how important it is. I, I didn't mention it. How important the Hamptons was to, are to us, how much Hamptons mean to this family. And Brother Hampton, his word, getting us up here, because without him, I don't know if we'd be here or not. But I wanted to stress how important that was. It is. Thank you. <clears throat> I'd like to say that uh, I really uh, appreciate the Roney family and how much it meant to this congregation, to the city of Jackson, um, to my parents, you know. We come, a lot of us grew up together right here at the church, and we're just not just Freddie, but all of us sort of had that family bond. 
so the younger generation might not know about it, but I want to appreciate Sister Myrtle Roney right now because, you know, we all lived our lives, took different paths, had our ups and downs, but those of us that grew up under our parents, we all had something planted within us that we knew we was going to have to fall back on it. And even today, we know, no matter what we do, no matter where we go, there's something in us, and we know it's right, and we know we're going to need it. But my concern is what we have and how precious it is, we owe it to our children. They, some of them, we might assume they have it because we have it, but if we haven't instilled it in them like it was instilled in us, they don't have it. We owe that to them. Now, pretty much we did what we wanted to do. We lived our life the way we wanted to live it. But now that it's gotten serious, it's more serious than it's ever been before. What Sister Roney left behind, every one of the Roney children are dependent on it today. It's what brought Freddie to the right conclusion in the end. That's why, we, that's why today it's not as grievous, it's not as hard as it could have been, because we know Freddie got saved, Freddie made it because of what his mother put in him. And when he needed it, it was right there. Our children are going to need it. We owe it to them. Our hearts goes out, we're praying for the family. We're not going to leave you alone. Even after this is over, with, we're still there. We're going to be praying for you. This time we have another selection. Musical.
Frederick Lynn Roney, Sunrise, September 5th, 1960. Sunset, March 14th, 2022. One of the great sons of Detroit and Jackson. Hardworking, skilled, as it was mentioned, fixing anything, joyous man, respectful man, loving, kind-hearted, one of the testaments of his depth of respect, we may be coming home from church and would see him or he would see Brother Hampton or any of the saints, no matter what he was doing, he would stop and give respect. If he had some, if he didn't want you to, he would put it behind it, respect. That's a saint, that's a saint, respect. He, as it was mentioned, coming from Detroit had tremendous status. Jackson's always looked at Detroit, big city, came in the eighth grade, and I didn't realize the extent of his giftedness when he came. It was mentioned earlier, I believe Terrence mentioned it, or someone mentioned his ability to dribble the ball. He really mesmerized Jackson. For the young people here, he was Kyrie before Kyrie Irving. Mm -hmm. Isaiah before Isaiah. My brother Basil, he was noted. The NBA had put together a petition to allow the first non-NBA player or player not up under NBA contract to participate in the NBA slam dunk contest that Michael Jordan ended up winning later. My brother Basil was the first person that they put together a petition to allow it to happen. He was saying, he said, Lee, you know what people think of me if you grew up in Jackson regarding slam dunking or basketball? He said, whatever you think, as far as dribbling the basketball, that was Freddie. He said Freddie was on that level. We had never, we hadn't seen anything like that. The way he could handle. So he got the respect of all the young men and he was so good looking that he got the respect of all the young women. So when Freddie came to Jackson, he made his mark at a high level. I was thinking of his family, and even before I get to the children, just to see how his siblings universally, depth of love that they had for him. The things that they were saying regarding what this man, it was almost as if they were talking about like a father. Like, um, you know, you know how you, a woman have a man in their life that just go there, that just mean that much. And each one of his sisters would speak of him on that level. We may get into it, but we knew it was nothing but love. Nothing but love. I was also growing up in our generation, for our sister Mitchell's descendants, we would put Damon, Duro and Butterball, almost like they were brothers. But they had mentioned, they said, Lee, that was your generation. But you didn't realize that Freddie, Terrence, and Arnold was that before them. Yeah. They were that together all the time, playing together with each other, messing with each other. We actually, in our mindset, was like Butterball, Maurice, Damon, and Duro were like brothers. They said it was the same way, the same way. But then they hit me, and they say that that really is a testament to Sister Mitchell. Sister Mitchell had a giftedness and a commitment to family 
like very few women, very few individuals that you'll ever meet. And she made sure that the family stuck together. I was also uh, impressed with Renetta just being there as we gathered around the bed, all joining hands in prayer. That last prayer, you was right there. You was right there by his side, that last prayer. I remember walking out with you. And even afterwards, I think Kim or someone said, you, you said we did what we could do. We was there, we all prayed like mama taught us. We all prayed, he was there and you were there. He knew you loved him and he loved you. He knew he could always count on you and we appreciate you for that. Also, we appreciate Carmen, which you mentioned he was the most loving brother, considerate, funny, spoke of God so highly, even the day before he died, speaking about God, never lost faith, wrote on a pad of paper. Even when the doctors came in and said this, that, or the other, he wrote on the paper, God has the final say. Loved his family, loved his children. And I love what this quote you said that Freddie said, if it ain't tight, it ain't right. <laughs> and you really hit me with this one, Carl. You said he called you and said, Now, I'm not trying to be worldly or anything like that, but I do remember a song <laughs> from back in the day. But you called, you said that Freddie called and just was there, and this was when he was just speaking. But he said, come, you said, what's going on, what you want? And he didn't really say much. He said, what you, I mean, what you called me for? He said, I just called to say I love you. What brother in the world, does, if I, I'm a brother, Usually it's a transactional call, or at least I'm checking on you, or something, hey, this, and then we're gonna do this. But just to take the phone, call a number, stop what you're doing. Hello? Hello? It's me, Fred. What you want? What you want? You want something from me? You want? I just called to say I love you, girl. I think you said that uh, his baby sister, Sherry, <laughs> you said that he would text when he couldn't call. <laughs> he said he going to text you, mess with you, check on you, the greatest brother in the world. Uh, and, and it hit me when you were saying about how he would call aunts and uncles almost every month just to check on them. Just to keep the fam, come on. You know, if, if family don't have a glue person, it'll do like this. Seriously, if family, it could be a mother that loved her children. If one of those, if all the children or one of the children in the family does not become more gluey when that parent passes, that family will do like this. Or if one of the children is the glue and that child passes, that child was the one that kept everybody. That child was the one that can call everybody. That child, when the, somebody like this passed, it's going to take the remaining siblings to say, Lord, help me to be a little more gluey. Help me, help me, Lord, to do whatever I got to do to make sure for Sister Roni's sake that I keep the family together. I appreciate you sharing that with me, Sherry. You said he didn't like drama. <laughs> Sherry said that she called. Freddie, is she upset, mad at somebody, mad at one of her siblings? This thing. You know, our family get into it, you know. But at the end of the day, we still family. So did she get into it and she talking about one of her siblings? I'm upset. So and so just said, Freddie said, turn the page, turn the page. <laughs> she thought Freddie was going to be like, okay, I'm with you. I'm on your side. I ain't on her side. He said, no, 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 I'm Sister Roni's child. Turn the page. I ain't picking no. But that's real family. Real family with, don't pick sides. Don't think if, if, so, if, if, if Lau and, and Frankie get into it and they both call me, I ain't on none of y'all side. Get it together. All right. Also, he would say, turn the page. Don't discuss family. Mama taught us better than that. 
y'all need to talk it out. Y'all need to get together. And people often figure it out and don't realize that when a close family get into it, ain't nobody outside going to get them together. They got to do that. They got to say, okay, I, I got you. I got you. So I appreciate you sharing that with us. And Sister Kim, you had mentioned that um, our private Freddie was and, and you were endeavoring just to be of support and how it was getting more serious. Because we all thought, you know, we pull out of it. You know, he'd been low before. We're going to pull out of it. But it got lower. And you've mentioned that one of the saints had mentioned to you, I understand you going up there to comfort and you cleaning him up, this and the other, so on and so forth. But have you talked to him about that one talk? As Bud Frank said, one of the greatest blessings that we have when you grow up in truth is at least we know the way. If we don't choose to do it, if we do choose to do it, at least, I remember I went the first time I got away from home, I was up at Central Michigan University campus, and I, they was asking me, hey man, you say? And I said, no, 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 no. They said, your dad is a preacher. You don't cuss, you don't drink, you don't smoke. You say, no, I ain't saved, man. I know what saved is, I ain't saved. They said, no, 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 we saved, man. We, and they would go to these church services for campus. And they would be up there, yeah, oh yeah, gee. And I'm this is my roommate. I was there last night when she left your room. She left her stuff in the floor. No, 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 no. When I was little, I went, and it hit me. I thought everybody knew what saved or either you saved or you're not. And it hit me. I said, whoa. This is not my great man, my great granddad. He baptized me when I was four years old. And this thing. I said, you think you saved because your great granddad baptized you when you were four years old? You didn't consciously get on your knees, ask God to forgive you of all your sins, promise for the rest of your life, I'm not doing no more wrong. I will serve you, God, and nobody. Lord Jesus, I'm putting my faith in you. Not Muhammad, not Buddha, not nobody. They didn't die on the cross and shed their blood. God is a God of judgment and justice. Somebody got to pay the price for the sins I committed. Jesus is the atoning sacrifice. He wasn't just a prophet that wrote a good book. He was the sacrifice, the Lamb of God that died for my my sins if I don't profess faith in him when I get to the judgment all the sins that I've done they gonna see it on me it's not gonna be on Jesus who took it on the cross and the only way that's gonna work for me is I can't play games with him I can't come to him halfway he looks at my heart he knows my heart I gotta bring fruit met for repentance I gotta let him know God I'm sorry I'm broken and I'm contrite I shouldn't have done you wrong I'm not just praying because I'm in jail and want to get out. I'm not just trying to join somebody's church. I know when I get saved, every bit of dirt in my life, I'm done with it. I can't be involved in it no more. I got to walk away from it. I can't serve two masters. And for Sister Roni to put that in every one of their children, her children. If you don't do nothing else, whatever you choose to do, one thing, you're going to know truth. You don't know what salvation is. If you don't have nothing else, at least you're going to know that. Do whatever you want to do with it. I've done my job. I got it from my mom, Sister Mitchell. She got it from her mother, Sister Cameron, and Brother King, who took care of Brother Hampton and taught him the way. This is a legacy that as we get older, we'll realize one of the greatest blessings in this world, Brother Frank said, for us to have children and not to show them the way. Even if you get down to the end, you live whatever. At least you know the way. You know what you got to do. But to get in that moment and don't even know what you got to do. Thinking you can just depend on some priest coming here. Put some little no! No, Sister Kim. Freddie, are you ready to get saved? I understand talking about God and saying, God, yes, God has a relationship with all of us. But that don't mean you saved. Saved means your relationship is right. Your relationship is aligned right. Freddie, are you ready? I'm just so thankful that Freddie humbled himself. My God, amen, amen. Humbled himself. Amen. And said, sister, I'm ready to get saved. I'm ready to get saved. I want to ask God to forgive me. And he was able, in his own way, from his heart, to ask God's forgiveness. Thank you, Sister Kim. I know that was difficult because as a brother, you want to just love on him. But sometimes we got to have tough conversations. 
children. Where's Tasha? Appreciate you. You know he loved you. Proud of you. Every bit, of, every one of your accomplishments. Come on. One of the great students of the College of Jackson College. In my office all the time. Amen. Appreciate you. He was proud of all of your accomplishments, all that you've done. Just appreciate you expressing how daddy was full of love. Hard worker, come by, fix whatever. As a child, riding bikes, taking y'all on those bike rides all over, taking y'all to the Great Lake, showing y'all it's more to this world than just Jackson. And I want y'all to be prepared to be critical participants in this world. He took time with you as a man, does his daughter. He loved you. India, I love what you were saying this morning, even amazing father. And you used a word that is a powerful word, and that is unconditional love. Unconditional love. And that is just simply, a parent can have expectations, but even when those expectations aren't met, my love for you don't change. Even whatever we go through, my love for you don't change. There's nothing you're going to do or say to cause me to love you any less than I do right now. India, he had unconditional love for you. And thank you for sharing all your children. He loved his grandchildren. We appreciate you all. Dominique, appreciate you being there at the end of the end by his bed. A lot of times fathers in those moments in their minds are expressing to their sons, take it from here. Check on your sisters. Check on my sisters. Take it from here. I may not have done everything right, but I want you to know in my heart, I love you, son. Take it from here. As we just look at a scripture reference in Amos chapter 4, verse 6 through 12, I've seen where Me and Freddie had gotten saved the same day. 2020, there was a church service down at the Commonwealth Center. There's a conference room in there, and it had more space than the sanctuary. We didn't have this sanctuary, then it was a smaller one. And that day, a message was preached by Brother Ron Cavan out of Springfield, Ohio. He had preached a message, and it was titled, They Said Come Down. And it was talking about Jesus on the cross and how these persecutors were saying, aha, aha, if you're the Messiah, come down. You all big and bad, come down. And he was expressing how Jesus was saying, I, I can't come down for your sake. If I come down, you won't be able to get, if I come down, you won't be, I, I know y'all doing me wrong, but I got to stay up here for you. I know y'all don't want nothing to do with me. I know y'all want to do your own thing. I know y'all not concerned about me at all. I know y'all want to live your own life, go out there, get, do, do, do what you want to do. And you look at me as restrictive. And if I get saved, I can't do this. I can't. No, 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 no. If you get saved, you can live a productive life. You can live a glorious life. The thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I come that you might have life. You don't know what living is until you can live with a conscious freed. From all sin. You can live with power and joy down in your soul that comes from knowing the grace of God is real. Not religion, but salvation. And he stayed up there. And that day, the altar call was made. Over 50 people began walking down the aisle. One after another. All ages. One of the individuals that walked down the aisle that day was Freddie Roney. He walked down, gave his life to God. And then later I did. And actually the inspiration for that overflow was so high that the next morning, Brother Daryl Johnson called. He said, I'm on my way from work. Lee, see if you can get my reads, get the brother. I want to be saved. The inspiration was so high. So I always told Fred every time we see each other, 
I, my twin, my twin. And something happened after that in which he fell away from God. And just being clear because it's important for the legacy of the truth in this family. Salvation produced fruit. If a person is saved, their life produces fruit. You never have to worry about and wonder, is somebody saved if they're not? Salvation produced fruit. A person lives saved, they don't talk saved. When Freddie was involved in various things that weren't right, he would tell you, I'm not saved. When he repented, he told us, I want to get saved. Something happened, he fell away. But there was something genuine in Freddie. There was something genuine that the mercy of God was extended. And I believe it was a couple of reasons. One, he's just such a good-natured person. But two, everybody that was raised in truth don't love truth. Pray for me this morning. Everybody that was raised in truth don't love truth. I didn't say get saved. Some not saved, but they love truth. They appreciate and respect truth. Freddie had a deep respect for truth. I appreciate you. I pre don't change. I mean, truth is, is truth is right. If don't know by truth is right. We have to raise this, but Gramps Graham, raised this better. We know. Is the church still the same? If it ain't, truth is truth. The path of the just is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter into this perfect day. Don't come when they're talking about, well, don't take all this. It take what it took the saints of old. It take, we, we can't come at this end time and say, we're going to water down this and change it. Who is you? It ain't your church. It's God's church. And you got to walk in light as he's in the light. If you want to bag up on light and do your own thing, on the judgment day, according to scripture, you're going to be judged by the greatest light that you ever walked in. I don't care who you get to redefine what truth is. You can't redefine it. Many people have tried to redefine it. Ain't no inspiration with it. And some in your spirit, if you have not reprobate, will let you know something ain't right. I know what I, whatever I'm doing, but something ain't right. I know what, something ain't right. You could even be in a Zion and somebody's spirit is off. I don't care. They ain't right. It, it is what it is. It is what it is. Right is right. So here, God in mercy, Israel had gotten off. He's going to leave it with you like this. And God in mercy told Israel through the prophet of Amos. He was one of the 12 minor prophets. He lived about 12 miles south of Jerusalem. Strong prophet. And he went to Israel and he declared to them that you all have gotten off into idolatry. I ain't worshiping God. And then some of them tried to do both. They, they still tried to do follow the Mosaic law and the Ten Commandments. And, this, and then they tried to phase other stuff in. You know, just, just try. And the prophets, I see right through what you're doing, man. Y'all got to get situated. And God began to let things happen, send things their way. And in this account, Brother Frank, read verse 6 for us. And I also have given you cleanness of teeth. This, this is, if you was a title, just a couple moments. It is responding to mercy. Responding, what Freddie did was responded to mercy, but he also positioned himself. Because I'm going to tell you, in that last moment, if you feel with bitterness and confusion and strife and all this other stuff, you got to get past all of that to get to God. God. Almost impossible. You don't even know what's right no more. Talking to somebody, I got to talk to somebody later tonight that don't really know. Okay, on that great day, it's going to be all you want to get. You may feel good now and think that you, I'm big and bad. All right, that great day, you're going to have to figure all, get through all that mess to find out what's really right. So here, God in mercy has said, I'm going to do some things to get your attention because I want you to respond to mercy. Come on and read. And I also have given you cleanness of teeth Come on. in all your cities Yes. and want of bread in all your places. Uh -huh. Yet have you not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Uh -huh. And also I have withholden the rain from you when there were yet three months to the harvest. And I caused it to rain upon one city and caused it not to rain upon another city. Mm -hmm. One piece was rained upon, and the piece whereupon it rained not with it. So here he's saying that I caused a famine to come your way. They had nothing to eat, cleanest of teeth, nothing to pick out their teeth. He said, but 
The famine should cause you to be like, I'm going to turn to God now. Lord, I need you. You're my life is it, it, not. I need some rain in my life and it's not there. But OK. OK. So I need some rain. I need some I need something substantive in my life. So now it's not there. So I'm going to turn to God because things ain't going right in my life. I'm going to turn to God. Now I'm going to come to God and say, Lord, I want to get my life to you. Lord, I want to be right. Some things are not. My marriage ain't right. My family is some things in my body. Some in my mind. I'm depressed. Some things are now. I'm trying to force life to make it work, but it's not really working. And God is allowing those things to happen to get your attention Israel but he said yet you still won't turn to me read brother Frank so two or three cities wandered unto one city uh -huh. to drink water uh -huh. but they were not satisfied come on yet have you not returned unto me said the Lord Y'all found a city with some water, y'all thought. Y'all went down there to get it, but you still didn't get set. In other words, you tried to, instead of turning to me, you tried to go where you thought you could get help at. You went to attorney. You, you went to the, uh, this place and that place, and you tried to get a loan, and you tried to find another man. You, tried, you went to these earthly means to try to figure out a way to help your life make sense and to bring peace and real joy to your life, but you wouldn't turn to me. It didn't work, and it don't work. You can't turn to other stuff when you need to turn to me. I'm trying to get you attention the things that's not going right in your life is because of me I'm not allowing it's hoping that you will turn to me here you are learning to live with far beneath what you could be living with because I'm trying to get you in. you can't get your money together you can't no relationships are really right you can't get your your mind together you can't don't turn to this and that and the other please turn to me read I have smitten you with blasting and mildew. Come on. When your garden and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increased. Come on. The palmer worm devoured them. Come on. Yet have you not returned to me, said when the Lord. When things did go right, I allowed something to happen to that, but you still wouldn't return. Read, Brother Frank. I have sent among you the pestilence. Yes. After the manner of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Your young men have I slain with the sword. Come on. And have taken away your horses. Come on. And I have made the stink of your camps to come up unto your nostrils. Come on. Yet have you not returned unto me, said You the know Lord. you're getting at the end when he said, your, your horse, that's your strength, amen. He said, your young men, that's your future. So your strength and your future don't look like because some things have happened into your life. And he said, your, your, your stink has come up to your nostrils. I don't even like my life. I don't even, I, I don't want to go to the club no more. I ain't trying to go out. I don't want, I ain't trying to mess with nobody. I just tired. I just don't even like my, and I'm dealing with depression. I'm dealing with anxiety and I'm dealing, I got some thoughts of suicide I'm not I don't even like what I'm living I don't even like that's why I gotta stay high or stay drunk I, I don't even like my own God is saying in mercy I'm trying to get your attention you know you ain't happy you know it ain't going right you know you really need something more that's me in mercy trying to get your attention but you still you don't even like yourself the mercy of God. This is what they taught us about when we were young. They're letting us know that God will allow some things to happen to get your attention. I'm praying that in this passing, mercy being extended to the family one more time, and you still won't. You said, let me do my 20s, but Hampton, I'm out, man. I'm going to go. Uh, uh, Y'all took us from Detroit, so we're going back to Detroit. We're going to feel went up there. Ain't nothing in Detroit. You found out. Well, we're going to come back. Ain't nothing. Keep going to the post, please. If it was there, you'd have found it back in 82. I'm trying to, I'm going over here. I'm going over here, I'm doing. But you won't come. You won't try everything but this altar. You're going everywhere, trying everything else but the altar. You're trying this. Some folk will try a man. Oh, I'm a cute girl. I tried a man. The man ain't work. I'm gonna get another man. That man ain't work. Okay, now I'm gonna go to a girl. Okay, I'm gonna go to a little girl. I'm gonna go to an old girl. You just going all over the altar, the altar. Okay, I tried weed. Now I'm gonna try this. Give me some pills. They said those work. They said, okay, forget if it ain't in the pills. It's not in oxycodone. It's not in weed. It's not in liquor. It's not there. Why won't you try the altar? I'm just saying, what's so bad about the altar? What's so bad about me? What's so bad about it? Read, brother Frank. I have overthrown some of you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Come on. And you were as a firebrand plucked out of the burning. Yes. Yet, have you not returned unto me, said the he Lord. He said, Sodom and Gomorrah, some things happen, you should be dead. But in the nick of time, I snatched you up out and said, no, hold on. You should have flipped over in that car. You should have OD'd that night. But in mercy, I remember Sister Mitchell's prayers. In mercy, I remember Sister Roni's prayers. In mercy, I said, I can't let this happen to this grandchild because their great-grandmother prayed a prayer over her heritage, so I can't allow that bullet to hit them. 
after you knew God spared you. Now I know you're going to come to me now. You know I spared you. You know I looked out for you. Despite all that, it don't matter. I should have died that night. I'm going to get up and I'm going to still be faithful to the devil. I'm going to still do what I've been doing. I'm still not going to turn to you, God. Although you spared my life and you plucked me as a firebrand, plucked from the burning. Seriously. For real? It's like that. When God extends the greatest mercy. Watch. Close it out, Brother Frank. Therefore. Therefore. Thus will I do unto thee. Thus will I do unto thee. O Israel. O Israel. And because I will do this unto thee. Because I will do this unto thee. Prepare. Prepare. To meet thy God. To meet. Responding to mercy. Freddie left us an example. No doubt God did many things to get his attention. But in the end, when that mercy extended his hand one more time, he said, I got it. My God. I may have struggled with some things in life, reaping some things that I sold, but I know one thing, I'm not going to burn for all eternity. I know one thing, I'm not going to hell over this. I know one thing, God, you gave me just that last, no doubt God, God's last finger of mercy was just extended that day. And he reached out and he grabbed that mercy. It is our prayer. It is our prayer that we will not keep letting our hearts get harder and harder and harder. You're not resisting me. You're not resisting your mother. You're not resisting your family's legacy. You are resisting Jesus Christ who died on the cross for you. And one day, my fear is that mercy is going to run out. And that door is going to be slammed. In Proverbs, he said, you're going to then come crying, God, maybe if he wouldn't have moved that day, Sister Kim, when y'all was trying to get me there, maybe by the time I came, that day the door was shutting. And when I came, it might have been too late. So I was able to pray, thank you for saving him. You don't know when your door of mercy is going to close. Even with this funeral, God choosing him, bringing him home, he knew this is another act of mercy to bring the family together to hear mercy extended one more time. Amen. Our prayer, House of Johnson may come, our prayer is that in mercy we'll respond to the voice of God. House of Johnson may come. Family, tremendous job, tremendous job bringing him all the way through. Tremendous job being with him. We say this in cliche, children, we, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. Children, be encouraged. You got the legacy and the memories to hold on to, to hold on to. And sometimes this is said as a cliche, but I say this with everything within me. If Sister Roni was sitting here right now, my Sister Gwen is a witness, the oldest family member left among us. Stay together. Stay together. Whatever comes up, ask God for a forgiving heart that you all can stay together. I don't know many families as close as Sister Mitchell's heritage. Let's stay together, y'all. Love you.
shout and tell the right story. We shall wear a robe and crown. Watch ye, therefore, don't lay your armor down when old Satan tries to turn you around. Be steadfast, be unmovable. You shall wear a robe. Reach my heaven, heaven lay down, down my heavy burden, put on a robe of glory. Shout and tell the right story. We shall wear a robe and crown. Watch ye, therefore, for you know not the day when the Lord shall call your soul away. If you're fighting, striving for I'm gonna sit down beside King Jesus, tell him how I made it over, put on a robe of glory, shout and tell the right story, we shall wear a robe. I'm gonna sit down beside King Jesus, tell him how I made it over, put on a robe of glory, shout and tell the right story. I'm gonna sit down beside King Jesus, tell him how I made it over, put on a robe of glory, shout and tell the right story. We shall wear a robe and cry. We shall wear. Oh, yeah. 
since my Redeemer, since my Redeemer, I have found the light of heaven is on me. Perfect love makes me whole. Oh, oh praise the Lord, I'm heaven bound. I'm heaven bound forever, and I must not wait. Shout and sing and shout through the gates. Savior is crowned. Oh, praise the Lord, I'm heaven bound. I am so happy in knowing there's a mansion for me. Since my Redeemer I have found, He said that He would prepare it soon. His beauty I'll see. Oh, praise the Lord, I'm heaven bound. to be at the meeting when the Savior is crowned. Oh, praise the Lord, I'm heaven bound. I'm heaven bound for heaven and I must not wait. Shouting, singing, and shouting through the gates. I want to be at the meeting when the Savior is crowned. Oh, praise the Lord, I'm heaven bound.
truly must be walking, walking in, in the light. The light. My, my God, oh yes. Oh yes, we'll trust Him while we live. We'll trust Him when we die. And then when all our work is done, we'll reign with Him. Mama, sing that verse again. On to enter heaven, my mind. I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and earth were passed away and there was no more sea and I John saw the holy city the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall be any more pain for the former things are passed away but when thou prayest enter into thy closet when thou shut the door pray to the father which is in secret and the father which is in secret shall reward thee openly after this manner therefore pray ye our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.